Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 1, Avoiding Plagiarism. Some of you are watching this video as part of a full course, complete with assignments and a syllabus. And some of your teachers have probably assigned writing assignments. Now, you've probably heard a teacher say that you should never plagiarize when you write, because plagiarizing your writing assignments is a serious offense. And that's true. But what is plagiarism, exactly? Plagiarism is taking credit for what other people said or wrote. And we should note that sometimes plagiarism extends beyond even speaking and writing. For example, it's possible to plagiarize a painting or a piece of music, too. I'm going to make a distinction between two kinds of plagiarism that will be relevant if you do writing assignments for this class. Idea plagiarism and language plagiarism. Idea plagiarism occurs when a student knowingly includes somebody else's ideas in a paper without signaling to the reader that somebody else came up with those ideas first. Here's an example of idea plagiarism. Let's imagine that a student reads the article on the left and uses what she learned to write the sentences on the right. Let's read the headline and the first paragraph of the article together. Hackers can tap USB devices in new attacks, researcher warns. USB devices such as keyboards, thumb drives, and mice can be used to hack into personal computers in, in a potentially new class of attacks that evades all known security protections, a top computer researcher revealed on Thursday. And let's imagine that that student includes the sentences on the right in one of her papers for this class. Cybersecurity threats are constantly changing. It is now possible for a hacker to even attack mundane USB devices. The student clearly got the idea for what she wrote from the article, but she didn't mention her source for this information in the paper that she wrote. Readers of her paper could think that she's claiming to have made this discovery for herself, but she didn't. She read it somewhere else. Different classes will have different guidelines for citing sources to avoid plagiarism. Here is some basic general advice that might help keep you out of trouble. To avoid idea plagiarism, tell us where you read or heard the idea. So, that student could fix the problem by writing it this way. As Jim Finkel at Reuters reports, it is now possible for a hacker to attack even mundane USB devices. Now it's more clear that the student isn't taking credit for the idea. The second kind of plagiarism we'll talk about here is language plagiarism. Language plagiarism occurs when a student uses somebody else's language to express an idea without signaling to the reader that he or she is using somebody else's language. Here's an example of language plagiarism. Notice that in this example, the student has copied a sentence from the original article word for word. Readers of the paper might think that the student wrote this sentence for himself, and we give him credit as if he did. But he didn't write it for himself, he copied it from somewhere else. Now, different classes might give you different guidelines for avoiding language plagiarism. But here is some basic, general advice for avoiding language plagiarism that could keep you out of trouble. To avoid language plagiarism, restate the idea in your own words. Here's an example of what that might look like. The sentence, USB devices such as keyboards, thumb drives, and mice can be used to hack into personal computers in a potential new class of attacks that evade all known security protections, could possibly become, it is now possible for a hacker to attack even mundane USB devices. By rewriting the sentence, we have avoided language plagiarism. But look, we still have the problem of idea plagiarism. The new version doesn't tell us whose ideas the student is using. Fortunately, we already know how to avoid idea plagiarism. To avoid idea plagiarism, tell us where you read or heard the idea. As it stands, we can't tell where the student read this idea. The student should add a phrase that attributes the idea to the source that he learned it from. So those are the two kinds of plagiarism that you should look out for, idea plagiarism and language plagiarism. The big idea here is that when you write a paper, we want to be able to distinguish what you are writing from what other people have already written. If you do some research for your papers, make sure that we can easily distinguish your ideas and your language from the ideas and the language that you encountered in your sources. Don't present other people's work as if it's your work. Your teacher will probably have more advice for you if you need help. Okay, that's all for now on plagiarism. In the next lesson, we'll begin talking about cybersecurity. In that lesson, I'll overview some of the reasons why we study cybersecurity.